Yeah, hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. Uh, now, today I have a really fun class about expressive painting, specifically about animal pet portraits. Um, I have a new kitty, as I'm sure all of you know if you've been watching, but if you don't know, I have an adorable little kitten that the universe gifted me, and I am, of course, obsessed. Uh, so I want to do an expressive painting with acrylics, today. So if you are interested in following along, uh, of course, go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in today's class code to check out the art supplies that I'm using, which is JL322. So if you type that code into our search bar, uh, the teacher's cart should come up and then you can check out everything that I'm using. But if you have acrylics at home and you want to play along, please feel free. I would love to see you guys participating. It makes me very happy. Um, and if you are looking for the reference image of the little nugget, that's my cat's name, nugget. Uh, if you're looking for the reference image of what I'm painting off of and basing this off of, if you go to our Facebook group, uh, the Jerry's Live Facebook group, it is free to join for you guys to join. Uh, it's a huge group of like 7,000 people. Bunch of artists all getting together to enjoy art. Uh, but I did post this picture over there, so if you wanted to check it out that way, feel free to jump over. Um, and a little side note, this is going to be a two-part class because this is a bit of a process. <laughs> um, so today we're actually really going to be more focusing on the underpainting, uh, and I'm going to try and get as far as I can on the painting. I typically paint fast, so I am going to try and slow it down just a little bit, um, but it's... It's a really fun process. The great thing about expressive painting is that there are not a lot of rules that you really have to follow. Now, I am trying to paint my cat and I'm trying to make it be more representational and I want it to look like her. So I am going to follow the parameters of value and form. Uh, so I want to make sure that her eyes are in the right spot um, and that her values are the right shade. Uh, and when I say value, I mean like how dark or light it is not specifically about color. The real fun thing about expressive painting is that you can play with brush strokes, you can also play with colors. You don't have to have naturalistic colors for it to make sense. The, the goal right here on my table, if we go to that overhead camera, uh, you guys can check it out. Uh, there we go. Uh, so this is the example of what I had uh, done. Now if you actually look at this, this is not realistic colors. The only thing that's kind of realistic are the highlights are more white and the darks of uh, her nose and her eyes are kind of more on the black kind of side. Um, but other than that, I have purples, there's greens, there's really bright pinks. There's all kinds of colors in here and that's kind of what I wanted to do today is show you how to take a, an image, which um, here's, here's my image. Take an image that you, you can take of your uh, animal and how to uh, transfer it over into a very fun, expressive painting. Now, um, for all of you out there who are watching on Instagram or TikTok, I know you can see uh, the painting right here, not my actual um, reference image that's right next to it. If you are over there on those platforms and you want to see a bigger screen in high resolution, you can always jump over to YouTube or Facebook, and you can also engage in our chat. So if you guys have uh, any questions as I go through this process, feel free to pop them in the chat on YouTube and Facebook. Um, that would be a great way to ask them while I'm live. So this is the goal uh, to get to when we're done. Uh, we are not gonna even get close to this uh, today. We are just focusing on the underpainting. But like I said, I am gonna be working on um, in acrylics. I am gonna be using the Lucas Krill Studio. Uh, this is the set of nine that come in 100 milliliter tubes. Um, it's really wonderful basic mixing set. And then of course I have my little nugget reference photo. I do have a glazing medium that I'm gonna be using uh, just be for the very beginning, uh, but that's probably the only time I'm gonna actually be using this. And then of course, I am also, if you guys are wondering, the canvas I'm using is Paramount. Uh, it's actually tucked under here. Uh, Paramount, this is a six by 12. Uh, I just thought that fit my little nugget perfectly. Uh, also, fun fact, this is 
almost real size. This is how big she is. I could actually like squish a little face. This is, I think she's getting a little bit bigger than this, but this is actually about real size now. Um, all right, so as far as brushes are concerned, this is really dark. Wow, I'm sorry. It's like black on black on black. I'm gonna just lower that one side. Maybe actually if I do this, I'm gonna pop that back up. Um, so here we go, you guys can see that. Uh, this is the Black Swan brush set of, what was it, 12? I believe it's 12. Uh, yes, 12 brushes. Uh, they come in a variety of different uh, shapes and sizes. I personally am only going to be using a couple of the uh, flat. I might use a couple round at the very end of the process for a couple of details like the hair. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to be using uh, flat brushes because I want to make sure that I keep my brush strokes kind of expressive and I'm really going to work on not blending. That's going to be a big one. Uh, and then of course I have my palette over here which is a disposable paper palette uh, so I can squeeze out my paints that way. Now I'm going to put this away and pop this up because this is where we should be starting. Um, if you saw any of the, the emails or anything going out for this, it uh, told you that if you wanted to get ready for this class, all you had to do was transfer uh, the image of the nugget onto your canvas. I actually used the non-photo blue uh, Cezanne colored pencil. Uh, I prefer when I am going to be doing a uh, drawing like this onto my canvas, I prefer to use colored pencils. Now, the color that I use can vary, and the reason why, and I have a little, little sample canvas here, because um, I have just a, just a red, doesn't matter which color red, and then I have a blue. Uh, the reason why it can vary is because it depends on what color I'm going to start on on my canvas. Uh, so if I start off with red, and I wanted to, that's what I want to do today. And I'm going to pull out all the colors here real quick. Dump it out, sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, so I have all these lovely colors. Uh, there is a white, a cadmium yellow hue, yellow ochre, that's black, uh, permanent violet, cadmium red deep hue, ultramarine, viridian thalo, and then alizarin crimson. I'm going to start with the alizarin crimson. And here, let me pop this out on my canvas real quick. I don't need a ton, just a little bit. Now, when I was talking about my glazing medium, I'm using this to tone my canvas. Now, the reason why I picked this one in particular, um, and I even think this is an older label, so you might have like a brighter green, by the way. Uh, same thing, if it's a Liquitex glazing medium, the color of this might have actually changed over the time. This has been in my studio for a minute. Uh, but the reason why I'm using this one is because it will lower the opacity of my paint because I want a nice transparent because I want to see my drawing through it, right? Uh, it will lower the opacity, but it will also um, keep it about the same dry time. There are uh, all kinds of acrylic mediums out there. This one in particular does not extend the dry time, nor does it speed it up. It's just essentially an acrylic polymer, like the same thing that's in your paint already that you, it just doesn't have any color in it. So that's a really lovely way of kind of breaking down your paints without adding water, which I also just realized I don't have on my table. Can I get a bucket of water, please? <laughs> Sorry. I was running around doing all kinds of things this morning, but yeah, that was the one thing I forgot. This is why I love my team. Uh, so yes, if you add water to your acrylics, you can to an extent, but once you start adding too much water, you are messing with the binding of that a paint. So what I mean by that is that the acrylic polymers in a paint uh, want to bond really, really well, but when you start adding water, they start floating away from each other and they can't really grab onto each other. And it just, it makes it less stable and less archival over time. So this is a really good way of getting that kind of effect without ruining the bond of your paint. But if I start with a red, and I, make a little transparent. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. I'm going to tuck that under. There's some water for my table. Actually, I'm going to pop this over here. It's just a, 
a good bucket of water. And you guys know I love this Creative Mark brush basin because it's got those little grooves that I can knock off all kinds of paint on my, my brush. Okay, so if I do this and I tone my canvas, you can see that red line is real hard to see. So if I'm starting in a red tone on my canvas, I do not want to use a red colored pencil. Uh, so that's why I use the blue specifically. You can use a pencil itself. Um, I personally do not like that. I like the colored pencils better because the waxiness of a colored pencil will stick more onto your canvas, whereas like graphite tends to blur into your acrylics and it makes it a little irritating when your acrylics are now not a really pretty pink, it's just like a gray pink. So it's one of those things just to kind of be aware of. Now, do we have any questions so far? I know I kind of jumped straight into the process of like, hey, I have a cat on the canvas. <laughs> uh, but again, if you do have questions, make sure you go over to Facebook or YouTube to pop them into our live chat. I do have my amazing moderators, Amanda and Frida over there. They can ask me live any of the questions that you have going on. So I'm gonna take this alizarin crimson and just tone my canvas. That is the first thing I wanna do. And I feel like, eh. The only larger brush I have is the fan brush. I probably should have gotten a bigger brush than that. Do I have one down here? No. It's okay, this won't take me very long. And I'm not being precious about this. I just wanna get the white of the canvas gone. That is the only goal of toning my canvas. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to worry about the brush strokes going in a certain way. I do want to keep, whenever I go over my drawing, like I said, the, the waxiness of that colored pencil will kind of keep the drawing stuck down. But when it comes to uh, painting on top of it, there are some brands of colored pencils I have found kind of slide around a little bit more than others. So just maybe keep your brush strokes on the top of your drawing to a minimum. Do we have a question? Yes, actually, Nicole was asking about Caran d'Ache colored pencils or watercolor mm -hmm. pencils. Ah, so if you use a water color, like a watercolor colored pencil, those will break down if you add any kind of moisture. So acrylic paint, until it dries, is it's wet. It's gonna have that moisture in it. Uh, so if you do that, you're gonna lose your entire drawing because all of your colored pencils marks are gonna start breaking down and they're gonna move on you. So that's why I would suggest a just a traditional colored pencil. There's all kinds of brands out there. I really do love the Cezanne non-photo blue though because it's a perfect blue color for this start. And I have been really loving starting my paintings in like a pink kind of color lately. Yes, we have another question? Yeah, um, two. Can you tone the canvas first and then draw your cat? Absolutely. And then, um, are you going to be making a wash now that you're talking about adding water? I am not going to be making a wash. That's why I added the glazing medium and not water. Uh, because if I wanted to get to this level of transparency with my acrylic paints, I would have added way too much water. And it, yes, the gesso on the, the surface of this canvas is slightly absorbent. It's not that absorbent. And what you need is you need something to hold your pigment onto your canvas. And this is not absorbent enough to really grab on. Whereas like if you were doing this on paper, you would be able to get away with it because the, the fibers of the paper grab on your pigments, even if you add a ton of water. Uh, it's just that archivability thing. Uh, so you just don't really want to break down your, your acrylics with that much water. I think the percentage is like 30%. Not like I'm great at math, but you know. You have another question? If you use tracing paper, is mm -hmm. there a better option to use than carbon paper? The cool thing with tracing paper is that you can actually make it yourself. Um, so if you get a piece of paper, even if you actually were to take a print off like this and flip it over, scrub it down with whatever you want. There could be like a sanguine um, colored pencil or, or uh, there's a couple the different types of charcoal out there. I just dropped that. Whoops, excuse me. Uh, different cups, uh, types of charcoal out there. You can all use all kinds of things. The reason why I like the colored pencil is because it has that waxy. 
uh, ness to it. And charcoal and graphite tend to move a little bit more. That's why I typically just draw it myself. Now, if you are transferring it down, actually, I like the Sorol transfer paper because it does not tend to move. It doesn't like to even erase out. So if you are using a transfer paper to do that, a Sorol transfer paper is actually great. And we're gonna be going over this with acrylics, so it's going to be completely obliterated. You're not gonna see these lines once I'm done. Um, now, I think the outside of that is mostly dry. It's, it's acrylics and it's a very thin layer of acrylics, so uh, that is just a little tacky. And while that's drying, I'm gonna actually flip this around and get my other colors onto the canvas. And yes, if you guys do have any other questions, this is a great time to pop them in the chat while I'm squeezing out my paints. And I am also the weirdo that I like to keep my paints in um, like a chromatic order, like this. And I know technically yellow ochre is a yellow. Personally, I think of it more as like a brown, like a neutral, so I put it near my blacks, but I uh, always will have my, my colors in chromatic order just because it's easy when it's on my palette for me to know where they land and I know exactly where I need to go as far as my paints are concerned. Especially when you have a bunch of paints that look dark and you're just not entirely sure which one it is. Some, that's usually uh, an issue you have in um, oil paints. Same thing with watercolors, I guess, I should say. Once you once they're panned, they can look really, really dark. So, so I keep them in chromatic order. All right, Can you remind so. us, did you use glazing medium to thin? I use glazing medium to thin down um, the wash of alizarin crimson. So this is just alizarin crimson and glazing medium. And because the glazing medium is like a clear acrylic paint, it uh, isn't gonna be a problem with it binding down at all. All right, so if you are painting your own animal at home and you're not painting, that my cat is technically a gray tabby, mm -hmm. so I know she's gray. I know the color of gray she is, and it's more like a blue purpley gray. So that's I tend to want to go towards like a blue purple for the majority of her fur. Um, but if you're painting uh, an animal that is maybe got browns in there, um, I don't know, it's one of those things where like, there's really no wrong answer as far as colors are concerned. Um, it's just, for brown, I probably wouldn't use brown. I'd probably use like reds and oranges. And uh, if it's a darker value, I might even go um, more purple. I just, it's an, there's no wrong answers with this and I love it. All right, so I'm just gonna pop all of the, the colors except for I'm not going to put black on my canvas just yet. The reason why is because I try not to uh, rely on black to darken my values. Um, I try to keep the purple and the blues as my shadow colors. So like they tend to be darker on the, the scale as far as like when you're looking at them. Like if I were to throw this whole thing in a black and white uh, image, that's going to read really, really dark. That's my purple. So instead of using uh, like a black to darken my colors, I use the purple to darken those colors and make them look like they're more in shadow. If I want to lighten my colors, yes, I might add white, but I gotta kind of just not do too much. I might even add a little bit yellow, depending on what color is my base. So if I'm trying to lighten a purple, I might instead go with red. Um, so it's one of those things that uh, I'm trying to keep that color theory idea in my head. And let me just double check these. Dry, that's, it's not like super, super, super dry, but it's dry enough. All right, so I have my reference photo right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lay down a color of kind of like a fun purple. Uh, now this purple right here, straight out of the tube is pretty dark, like I said. So I'm gonna use that for my dark areas in my cat. Uh, now I'm using, uh, what is this? A 12 flat brush. Uh, so if you look at, you know, it compared to my hand and compared to some of the areas, um, it's a larger brush. And the reason why I like that is because I can lay down a big chunk of area, but if I need to lay down a little thinner, I can turn it sideways like this and I have a 
almost a thin liner. As long as you take your brush and uh, drag it, if you can see it over on my palette here, um, drag it uh, the flat way through your paint. And it's loading it up and kind of dragging it that way. Uh, it's loading up the bristles as well as keeping that sharp edge. So that will help me to keep those edges that I'm looking for, right? Now, I am going to merely pop in all these darks where I see them. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm just trying to get the little dark chunks, like just in the tip of her tail, her little sort of stripes that are kind of coming through. That's all I'm worried about. So I'm gonna just a little bit under her chin. And if I go over my lines and kind of paint too far, it's okay. No one's gonna know. It's still gonna look like a cat. How would they know, right? No one's gonna know. I can hear everybody behind the camera just being like, how would they know? <laughs> I did a little bit of a darkness on the tip of her ear. And what's funny is when I drew in her face, I don't know why, but she just looks so derpy. I feel like I didn't quite get the, the line of her mouth right. So I'm gonna have to kind of work on that with the paint. <laughs> Not all drawings are perfect, and that's okay. So I'm gonna just darken her nose. Again, and I'm using just the corner of my brush if I need to get into a, like a smaller little area. And this will help me establish the darks of my painting and kind of where the majority of the forms are. And what's cool is that since I'm only using the one color so far, and I'm only worried about those shadow forms, at any point in time, if you look at this and go, I think this is done. You don't have to fully paint this in. That's, that's kind of the cool thing about having it be a, an expressive painting. Um, so, when it comes to an expressive painting, in and speaking of that, I'm trying to, yes, put the values in in the right spot. That's the part where I'm like, uh, you want to, um, sorry, I put too much water in there. And I meant to actually reach for my glazing medium. If you have a little bit of, uh, I'm not grabbing the whole puddle of paint up here. here. Actually, let me pull this down a little bit. I'm not grabbing the entire puddle of paint over here. I'm just grabbing a little bit. So if you're finding that your pile of paint right here is drying up, you can either reach for, uh, I still have a little bit of that glazy medium over here on my palette, or you can reach for more paint. Try not to reach for more water like I just did. So do as I say, not as I do. But I just grabbed more paint because I know I did that and I was like, eh, it's not what I want. Again, it's that archivability. We wanna make sure that this, uh, is going to stand the test of time and not gonna have any kind of issues with it peeling up. So, with the expressive painting, what I was just saying, uh, I, I like using the flat brushes because I can lay down a chunk of color and I don't have to really worry about if the shape is absolutely perfect. Uh, I am trying to be a little bit more representational, like I said, but if I don't lay it down perfect, that's okay. Your eye kind of fills in that information and it kind of tells you that it's right because it can make up that that kind of concept in your head. Like your, your brain will fill in the gaps for you, which is lovely. All right, so I think this is about all dark-ish. Add a little bit more of this purple, kind of get real dark down here because where her collar meets her chin, uh, you really can't see a whole lot of definition. It's just real dark, so paint it all real dark. And so what I'm doing is I'm going up to the line where I need it to be and I'm pulling it down because if I get a little too far, it's okay, she's fuzzy, no one knows. And the more you layer on top, the darker it's gonna be. 
So like you can see right here, I was real thin with my application, but down here I'm real dark. You can get those variations in color just by doing that alone. And then the buckle of her collar is right there too. And I'm going to go underneath it and pull down. Go up to that line, pull down. Right? Alright, so how are we doing on questions, by the way? And if you are, again, if you are over on Instagram or TikTok and you want to ask me questions about the process, feel free to uh, jump over to YouTube or Facebook where you guys can ask live. And the screen's going to be bigger. You can see more of my palette. All the fun things. All right, so I'm going to just fill in these real fast. Like right here in her chest, I know that it goes up and then it kind of fills out. I'm not too worried about getting perfect. And then... Just adding in, just and I, you see how I'm moving my brush. I'm moving it around to fill the shape of the space of what I'm looking for. So like this little area right here is, I believe, there's a darker shape right here. It's bigger, and then it kind of gets smaller, and then it gets bigger again. So it's not perfect, but looks like my cat. And what's funny is that even though it's it's a pink and purple portrait right now, it is absolutely reading as my cat. Your brain doesn't go, that's a wrong color. Your brain goes, that's a cat. Did you freehand nugget? Uh, sort of. So I um, had the image next to it and I was kind of eyeballing it that way. But you didn't like trace it or transfer? Didn't transfer it. But if you actually do take your image you can actually if you wanted to line it up and just flip it that way and draw it like that if that makes any sense there's I actually do have an entire show on how to uh, get your image onto a canvas I believe transferring 101 uh, different ways of getting it uh, from A to B but yes you can just draw it So, I do need to darken her little cheek. That's probably where the drawing got a little funky. I think her cheek got a little too wide. Gave her a little too much of a chipmunk cheek. cheek. But it does need to be darkened. And her little lips. A little space right there. Well, yes, we have a question? How would you approach if you had a predominantly white or cream pet? Ah, white and cream pets are kind of really, really fun uh, to paint because, again, there is no wrong color. Uh, if it's, uh, you can play around with the um, color theory as far as like warm or cools. So if you have all the highlights that are hitting your animal in all warm colors, like yellows and like beiges and and uh, fun, like if you take the yellow ochre and mix it in with white, it gives you a little bit more of a neutral, um, but it, it plays with all that warm kind of tones and then have all the shadows be blues and purples and greens. As long as you get those values right, you should absolutely have an image that reads as your animal. Um, and it might be on the higher side of the value range, like it might be closer to white, but it can still, you can still understand that that's all in shadow because it's all on the cool side, whereas like the, the other side is all warm and it looks like sunshine's hitting it. Great question. All right, so I'm going to just chunk all this in because I can absolutely, see I went too far? It's okay, no one knows. Um, I can absolutely paint on top of this. That's the cool thing is that if I go too far on some of this, I can paint over it. It's acrylic, it'll be dry in like two seconds. No one needs to know. All right, so I'm gonna just darken this little area where her gut is. And yes, my cat has a gut. It's okay, there's no judgments. 
she's a chunker she's chunky and she loves it but I'm gonna just go around that tail and if I want again I'm going with a lighter value here so it's just a, a almost like a dry brush uh, where I get less of the paint on my um, brush and then you can go in with a lighter kind of touch and it gives you a lighter value which is really really cool uh, and then her tail like has a core value it's right in the middle right here and I want to make sure I do that but the outside edges are lighter the reason why that happens is because there's a reflective light that's coming in this way and then there's another light going that way is a very bright room so once we get all these little dark bits kind of popped in then we can play more with the color and you can start layering all kinds of fun different things on top but this is just establishing more of that drawing and more of the value shades that we are looking for i need a little bit more up here in her face yeah somewhere in there it's darkish okay so down here it's like her little paw comes out of the darkness right here and I'm just going to touch in that lighter kind of value again it's the same purple that's on my brush but it's how I'm applying it so if I dry brush it um, some of that pink is kind of showing through and it optically mixes and your eye tells you that that's a lighter value all right so I'm gonna just chunk that in that whole little area right there again my puddle over here is drying so I'm gonna grab more paint and again I am not worried about uh, getting the exact perfect purple shade if you are mixing colors you'll see uh, later on in this process how I I still only keep a very small amount of mixed color uh, over here uh, that I'm working from and I don't want to mix a big puddle and the reason why is because then I get some more variation on color okay so there's I believe oh she had a little darkness on her paw right here too so here is her little her little butt right so I think I'm gonna add a little bit more blue and now I'm gonna start lightening that value and I'm going to add just a touch of white to this. Now, notice how I'm using that same area to mix this in because there is some wet purple still right there. And if I mix that in, it's now giving me like a, oh, and I'm sorry, there's a bit of a, a glare on it. It's giving me like a, a very Amanda color, a very blue purple kind of vibe. So I'm gonna use that to just keep her, like the darker areas of her, um, her gray fur. It's still in the same value range, but I'm going to, that was a little bit too dark. So this is why you need to kind of lay down some and then it might not be right. So maybe you lay down a little bit more. I'm gonna keep that in the blue kind of range because this whole uh, painting down here, uh, you can see like those blues in there. Uh, this is kind of the goal, but I probably will not have the exact same painting as that by the time I'm done with this. Every time you paint one of these, it's a little bit different, which is so much fun. All right, so that gray of hers kind of comes down into her face, but it fades and I don't want to blend. I want to have chunks of color that kind of um, optically mix where you're not actually mixing it on the canvas. Uh, I want it to actually just appear like it's mixed, but it's not actually. And the way you do that is by layering. This is a really fun, fun way of getting it to look very, very mixed, but you're not. So again, I'm just laying sort of this general shape of what I'm seeing. So if you see that, there's a lighter area right there. And if you sort of turn that into a shape, you can paint that shape, right? So this right here is like a triangle. So if I paint 
that triangle. There you go. And I also just stuck my hand in paint. Is it a painting if you don't do that, right? This is also uh, good to know. Uh, I believe all of these are AP certified non-toxic. Yes, they should have your little AP symbol on there, which is always good to know. Uh, I'm, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is non-toxic. Now, uh, my paint is starting to dry, so I can either reach for the glazing medium. Be aware that while you are activating it again and getting it to move around and be wet paint again, um, that can only go so far and you are messing with the transparency because glazing medium does mess with your transparency, uh, which is also really fun to do, especially if you're uh, wanting to lighten a bit of the value area and you're not wanting to get a very opaque coverage. Um, but with that being said, I'm gonna have to mix this again. That's why I like to only mix a little bit here and there is because I will get a variation. It's not gonna be exactly the same. I don't want it to be exactly the same. I want it to have that variation because it gives you a visual interest that is a little bit more yummy for your eye to see. If that's the only way I can really describe it. My teachers always used to describe colors as yummy to me and it's, I don't know, is it just me? Is it just me or are yummies, or are colors yummy? Are yummies color? Don't eat your paint. Don't eat your paint, though. Thank you, Katie. Don't eat your paint. Hashtag don't eat your paint. <laughs> we do need the hashtag don't eat your paint. It's a movement, I swear. All right, so I'm going to also, right here, I'm going to lay down that um, those darker uh, values of the blue uh, also in these little areas. But you see these little, like, almost, they're not white, but they do appear much lighter. I'm going to try and save those just until the end, but it pops a little bit of like that lighter gray. I guess I should say it's a mid-tone gray. The mid-tone gray, where it's not light, it's not dark, it's kind of somewhere in the middle, uh, somewhere in here. Now the really fun thing again is that if it doesn't look right at the end, you can paint on top of it. No one knows. No one's gonna know. All right, so, cause that got a little too dark over here. So I'm gonna paint on top of it, and you see how well that purple is now gone. It's, I love acrylics. It's so forgiving. Uh, now, when it comes to some of her fur, if it has like those little like, the textures where it looks like it's going that way, you can mimic that with your brush strokes where it's like, you put it down and you kind of flick it off. Um, not absolutely necessary, you can just dab it on. And then we're gonna just bring that blue down in here because this is all still very dark value. But it fades into that purple. Now I need a little bit more of this glazing medium. Emmy? Yes. Could you use an aqua mist to keep the paint hydrated without compromising the integrity of the paint? To a point, yes, absolutely. Aqua Mist is a bottle, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Uh, actually, can you grab me one? I'll show you. Uh, it is a really, really great bottle. Also, I'm going to start mixing this again. So I know that there's blue, I there, know there's purple. I'm out of that. I too much purple. That's okay. And then I know there's white. So if I wanted to, thank you. Um, this is an Aqua Mist bottle. There you go. That's how to spell it. Uh, sorry, that's like there's blue behind it and uh, blue paint behind it and a blue logo. Uh, Aqua Mist. So this is a really, really lovely bottle as far as, I think I need a little bit more purple in here, um, as far as if you want to keep your uh, paints kind of hydrated. Uh, now, as you can see, I have not done any of that to any of these blobs of paint. I, that's why I only pull over just a tiny amount because that blob of paint is going to start drying from the outside in. Acrylics dry through um, evaporation. So it's going to want to do that and the outside's going to evaporate faster. So if you miss it with a little bit of water, this is, I think, distilled water? Distilled water is best, uh, but this, okay, this is just tap water. Um, might have a little bacteria in there. That's why distilled water is a little bit better. Uh, but if you, it uh, spritz that on there, it gives you a very, very, very fine mist of water. Um, and it will kind of keep the top of it hydrated. Now. That's why I personally only pull 
a little bit of paint over is because I don't have to do that because that blob of paint, even though it might form a, a shell on the outside, I can kind of reach underneath of that and uh, grab a little extra blob of paint that's still wet underneath that skin that forms uh, and kind of work that way. Um, but again, it's you have only a certain level of water that you can reach before you start messing with the adhesion of your paint, but you saw how fine of a mist that was. It's so fine. It is, uh, that's why I like it so much. So you're not adding really much water at all. So that's why that is a fabulous little gadget. We do love it here. Uh, so right here, there's a lot of that like mid-tone gray. So if it's not dark purple, I'm gonna make it blue. And then I think I've kind of gone over a little too much of that. So I can go back to the purple and pop that back in if I want to. And you can work back and forth. That's why I also really love acrylics because you don't have to work light to dark. You don't have to work light, dark to light. You can work kind of back and forth and back and forth and keep fiddling around with it until it's correct. So that's the fun part about acrylics. All right, so I'm gonna continue just popping in these sort of mid-tone grays wherever I see it. I think there's a little toe that kind of pops over here. And if that doesn't look right later on, I'll just cover it in purple. All right, so just going to continue that up. And this little chunk of her butt that's kind of sticking out over here because she's a little chunky, um, I'm going to leave that probably to uh, a little bit at the end because there's a lot of kind of light hitting her from behind. She was backlit, well, kind of sort of top backlit. That's why you can see such a, a high uh, key highlight on the side of her head here and right here and a little bit right here. Um, that was the light at the fan above her. And so I think I'm going to pop in a little bit of that over here as well. Uh, but that will be, again, towards the end. But I'm not actually worried about that. Okay, so I think eh, maybe a little bit right here. And right here. And I think I'm going to use just the corner of that brush just to pop in that. But I think that is about as far as I'm going to go with that color. Now, um, I also have not really washed my brush. You see how gunky it's getting? Uh, when I start getting this gunky of a brush, I will wash it off. Uh, I have a really bad tendency to be married to my brushes, though. Um, but for me specifically, I'm trying to stick with a larger brush here so that I'm not fiddling around with all those details. Uh, if you do decide that you want to get a smaller brush and you want to put in all those little brush strokes of all the little hair, that's a really cool thing about expressive painting is that there is no wrong answer. Okay, so I do need it to continue the lighter shades here, but I think I'm going to start working on the areas that appear more white. Uh, now this is somebody who, um, is looking for a kind of, they have like a, maybe a white dog. Um, I am still in the shadow realm right here. So I can keep them cool. I can also keep them warm, but it might look like the light's hitting her from the front. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with this alizarin crimson um, and a touch of purple. And the reason why is because that alizarin crimson, yes, it is a warm red, but it tends to lean towards purple, so it's a cooler red, if that makes any sense. So like this red right here appears a lot warmer than this. So this appears more towards those cool ranges. So that's how I'm gonna achieve that, but I have to get the value right. So I got this fun pink. And I'm going to start popping that in. It's still not right. It's still not light enough. There we go. I'm going to do that. So what's really fun is that if I keep that, and I have that underpainting of the alizarin crimson too, I don't technically have to cover it up entirely. 
I can actually leave it completely exposed in some areas, which is very fun. You see with just a couple of brush strokes here, she looks like she has a little white snoot. At least I'm hoping that was reading as a white snoot. Does it read as a white snoot? We got, we got white snoot here. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, again, just pop in the same color all around her little face. Wherever I see that lighter value that almost appears as white. And again, the, the paint that I already laid down is dry. I'm not mixing it on my canvas. I'm just merely laying down chunks of color. And they also look like they have a little bit of like highlighter right here on her eyes. And then I know there's a lighter value in here but I think I want to keep that on the warmer side because when cats have their ears up like that and there's a light behind them, it tends to have almost like a, like a transparent effect, which is really fun. So it can have a little bit more warmth to it, which is very, very satisfying to see. All right, so just a couple more dabs for her little white spots on her face. How are we doing on time? Oh, it's 6.16 already. Time flies when you're painting. This is why, again, I am just merely working on the underpainting today. We are not going to be finished because this is part one. We're gonna have a part two in two weeks. It's not next week because Mott's gonna be coming on here. Uh, now, I actually just started touching in this pink here for like this lighter area, and I just remembered that I didn't want to do that because that's not in shadow. That's actually completely lit uh, by the, the light that's coming behind her. So I want to actually keep that warm. Uh, so I'm not going to actually continue to paint that, but I do have to remember to go over that. So I'm going to just kind of touch in a little bit over this here and there. Keep going down her little paw. And anywhere where I see a lighter shade of gray. Now, on this side of her arm, you can see there's a definite light coming in right there. And that is a very bright, very warm light. Um, so it's one of those things that I can also stay absolutely warm, uh, but I can, if I wanted to, cool it down entirely uh, by adding, maybe I'll do, a really bright purple, like almost a lavender. This, ooh, this is this is an Amanda color right here. Mm -hmm. But it's the wrong color, but it will absolutely read correct because it's the right value. See that? Now it looks like she has a little bit of light coming in. But if it's hitting her right here, that means that it should definitely hit these toes and this side of her body. So that is something I'm gonna have to keep in mind because these decisions will affect it later on. It should also hit right here on her face. So maybe I'll give her a little snout a little bit of that too. So again, if you're thinking of the light coming in this way, even though I'm changing the value or the color of that light, it needs to hit that entire area. Especially if it's just, again, the, the whiter areas of her face. So, like right here. And then it would be this. All those little white spots that you're seeing right here. Same thing. Again, I'm not worried about the exact shape. I'm just kind of getting the sort of idea behind it because your brain tells you, oh, that's cat fur. It's cat, they're fluffy. Now, down here, she's gonna have a bunch of like that right there against her little paw. 
And again, I am still working with a very small blob of paint and it is still not dry. I just reached for a little bit of glazing medium. So yes, acrylic does dry fast, but it doesn't dry that fast. Or at least the acrylics that I'm using. Now, that is specific to me, I should say, uh, and my studio right now. Uh, acrylics in general do not, like, they're not instant dry. Um, but uh, if you're in a, an environment that is a lot warmer and a lot hotter and a lot drier, this might be a bit of a problem. Uh, and you might want to actually instead use something like a, a Stay Wet palette um, that will keep your, your acrylics uh, damp faster, or uh, not faster, for longer, um, and there's all kinds of Stay Wet palettes out there. Um, the Stay Wet palette is actually a brand that is fantastic, so, and that's something that you are struggling with, keeping your acrylics uh, still going for a while. That might be something that you want to look into. So, there's my little nugget. Now before we keep going, I really need to address the background. The reason why is because once I change the background, it's really going to change the way that this is going to look. So in my original image, it is kind of like a, it's, it's technically the white walls. Uh, and I, it's got a yellow tinge because my light in that room was very, very warm. Uh, so I kind of just went with like a sort of desaturated beige on this. Um, I don't have to do that. Should I change it up? We'll let you guys, what do you guys think? Should we go I like the beige. brighter? Beige? I'm a beige, beige kind of person. Are we, <laughs> team beige, okay. All right, so let's go beige. Uh, so I'm gonna grab my yellow ochre, which again is technically a yellow, but I consider it, in my head, it's considered like a, uh, in the brown realm. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna probably add a ton of white to it. Now this is something I am going to use a lot of. Uh, so I am gonna make a big puddle of this. Now when I'm mixing, I should definitely be using a palette knife, but I don't think I have one because um, I think I took them over to my desk over there. But when it comes to mixing acrylics and when you have a big blob that you want to keep uh, on your palette, I tend to mix it and then try and pull it all into one big puddle off to the side um, just like this. The reason why is because it's the same exact thing. It might form a skin on the top, but I can still get to that wet acrylic underneath. Yes, we have a question? On Instagram, uh huh. we are wondering if you were to go with a brighter color, which would you have chosen? Probably yellow. You know what? I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in. I want it punchier. I want it vibrant. I want it fun. So I just, what was I'm getting hardcore judgment for my beige <laughs> choice. I was right busy now. or I would have fought you on it. <laughs> you know what? All right, fine. We're, we're fighting the beige. We're fight. We're going almost like a buttercream yellow. How about that? It's like a, like a fun little yellow, which honestly is the opposite of purple on the color wheel. Uh, so that's going to look real fun next to my purple cat. And that is a fun way of uh, getting a real intense uh, vibrancy in your work. So there we go. We're gonna tone down this pink. Uh, again, all I'm using is yellow ochre, titanium white, and this yellow, which is a cadmium yellow hue. Um, I couldn't remember that for a second. So I am going to now, I'm gonna carve the shape of my cat out. So if I actually took that purple and I went too far, I can go back over top of it. Um, and right here, where that intense highlight is on the cat, I am going to actually paint over that because I'm going to paint that intense highlight back in on top of the yellow. I want there to be uh, that right there specifically. I want it to be overlapping to where that way you can really see that yellow um, kind of covered it all up. Because that way, that, that magenta that I had toned down is only going to appear through my cat. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go uh, up until sort of the area of where you wanted to have the end of your cat and have that pink kind of still throw, uh, showing through. Uh, there's, again, no wrong answers. This is just a fun way of painting 
uh, kind of the general shape of your animal uh, without having any very specific rules that you have to follow other than value. Let's just, just stick with the value. There are no wrong colors, which is so fun. Also, if you do paint your animals uh, and you use this technique and you get a really fun uh, portrait, please post it to our Jerry's Live Facebook group. I would love to see what you make. It makes me so happy to see your paintings. So again, Jerry's Live Facebook group is free for everyone to uh, join. There's no, no nothing that you have to do special other than answer one security question. Uh, so if, as long as you do that, you get in and then you can post. And even if you have uh, questions about your artwork, if you need some guidance, uh, you can post there. And it's not just me who would answer. It's also all of these amazing artists that we have in the group already that um, can absolutely give you wonderful advice. Also, now, we are here for you to just tag us at Jerry's Artorama on any social media as well. Yes. Any social media, tag us at Jerry's Artorama. Uh, Amanda's the one that's going to see it, and then she will show me and it will make me so <laughs> happy. We love seeing your paintings. It, it is the best. It really makes our job so much better. All right, so I am trying to like use my the bristles of my brush to pull as much paint off my palette in the areas that aren't the like big blob, just so I can grab that before it dries. All right, so. And again, it's one of those things that if you don't paint or don't make enough paint and you get a variety of yellows because you had to remix it, that's okay. No one's going to know. And as long as you make your choices intentional and not a whoopsie. So like if I had another color, uh, and I think that actually happened with my original painting, I didn't make enough of that background color, so I mixed in more color and I kind of popped it in in different areas and so it looked intentional, not accidental. Do you have a question? Yeah, Chris on Facebook is wondering mm -hmm. why you originally did the background red, if you could just remind us. Uh, because I wanted to just obliterate the white of that canvas. I wanted a fun color to start with. You don't have to start with red. Um, I used the blue pencil specifically because I knew I was going to start with red, so if I wanted to use like uh, that ultramarine blue and tone that down and start with a blue instead I would have used my red pencil that way it would have shown up but you can start with any color you want it will change the feeling of your painting which is really fun if you have a blue it might feel more somber and calm uh, if you I like this pink because it, it feels very jittery and like very much like my cat spaz feels very spaz like obviously it's my cat you tend to be your animals, right? Spaz. <laughs> but I have also been really enjoying uh, starting my paintings off with like a funky magenta. I've even been using a lot of fluorescent colors lately, uh, which is so much fun. Cannot recommend enough. Uh, I know we have our Soho uh, paints that come in a fluorescent color, and I love them. All right, so now I'm going to have to fix my drawing that I kind of messed up a bit over here on her face. So, let me spread that out. When it comes to carving out around your animal, sometimes you might have to flip it upside down. Just to get that right angle, I am right-handed, so therefore it's easier for me to pull it on the right side rather than go across and try to get the left side. If it is easier to do, I'm gonna also flip my my reference image because it's going to be easier for me to tell what part of my drawing is absolutely wrong uh, while it's oriented the same way. But yeah, you might have to just flip your, your canvas up or upside down. It's a lot easier to flip it than to fight your, uh, your canvas. Trust me. Okay, so here we go. Now, I do have some areas where it's not perfectly covered, it's not perfectly yellow. That's okay. It's all right. And actually, you know what? I am going to keep it upside down still because I still, again, right-handed, it's easier for me to pull from this side. Cover. And I stuck my hand in paint again. My goodness. All right. 
And that's my hair, sorry. That also happens. It's, if it's not your cat's hair, it's your own hair. <laughs> Luckily, it's not the one that's still attached to my head. I do that all the time too. I lean into my artwork. Don't wanna actually admit to how many paintings, I or uh, how many images I have of me just covered in paint because I leaned into it. It's fine. All right. So I'm going to just, I think that's right. Yeah, that looks right. Again, if it's not perfectly right, I can always paint over this. I got the last little bit of my yellow here. I am going to tab, grab just a little bit of that because I'm running low. And voila, there we go. My very, very vibrant yellow background. I love it. Beige. <laughs> I'm just giving Maude a hard time just because. All right, so there's the background, and as you can see, it changed the way that our, our uh, painting looks quite a lot. So um, how are we doing on time? It is 6.30, holy cow! All right, so for everybody out there watching, um, again, remember this is only uh, part one of this two-part series, so this is our underpainting. Um, if I were to sit here and just fiddle around with this just a bit more, I would cover the bottom of this um, where the like the little cushion where uh, the cat is sitting. Uh, it was like this olivey green um, color. Haven't decided on whether or not I'm gonna do that, uh, but you guys can absolutely fill that in with whatever color that makes you happy. Uh, I'm probably gonna do that off camera here. Uh, I might even go with like a fun Viridian. I think I'm gonna do that. So that way I can have a, keep in the green realm, but have it, uh, Kind of change up the color a little bit but this is our underpainting so um we're going to other than i'm going to fill that in that little section down here off camera uh, this is where we're going to start in two weeks uh, because we're going to finish this process uh, i know it, it can't be next week because we have mott coming on and they're gonna have an amazing show talking about using references to draw from from your imagination uh, and kind of connect the two and how to get from A to B, which I'm very, very excited about. It is something that, uh, it's a really difficult, tricky process, so I'm really excited about that show. It's gonna be a great one. So make sure you join us next week to watch that. And then the following week after that, we are gonna pick up where we left off here, other than that little green strip uh, where I'm gonna add that in. Uh, this is where we're gonna start, and then we will continue our painting of the nugget. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining us, and again, if you have any questions in the future on this process, I always make sure to keep up on the chats uh, and all the comments that come in. Uh, now we are gonna also be checking our TikTok and Instagram as well as YouTube and Facebook for you guys. Uh, if you are on TikTok or Instagram and you want to see uh, this process in a larger format with uh, my palette and everything, make sure you go check it out on YouTube or Facebook. And I believe, again, uh, if you are interested in the art supplies that I'm using, jerryzartorama.com, type in today's class code, which is JL322. Teacher's cart should pop up and you can check it out that way. And if you didn't get the pay along with me today, go get caught up and join me next, not next week, sorry, in two weeks. Join me in two weeks. So I will see you guys then. Bye.